This large box showed up from GearBest, and I really want to open it. I believe it's the CR10 Enlarged, but we'll find out. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. Let's see if we're even. Good enough for now. Hey there, welcome back. I've got out my trusty knife, and we're gonna open up this box from GearBest. I believe it is the CR10 Enlarged, and I believe if I can actually cut a straight line, we can get this box open. Inside this box, we have a giant white piece of styrofoam. It's lovely, actually. Uh, and yes, it is. It is a very large CR10. It seems to be packed the same way that its smaller brethren are packed. Here is the Y axis and everything inside a nice styrofoam encased prison of sorts. We'll set it aside. And there we go. There's that one. It's, it's literally just like the smaller CR10 which is great because it was super easy to get out of a box and it was super easy to put together. So even though this is larger, it should be easier and simpler. Just like the smaller one, I guess. Packing on this is extremely good, or it's done extremely well. I'll unbox this fun fact, uh, Naomi Wu, you know her as Real Sexy Cyborg, she actually got to take a tour of uh, the Creality business over there in Shenzhen, and uh, she spoke with them and, and, and talked to them about their practices. It was really cool. Put the link to that video down in the description. You should definitely check it out. All right, look at this. Two, two lead screws on the Z-axis. That is wonderful. And something that was definitely needed if you were gonna take this and make it go any bigger. Uh, right off the bat, I do notice that <laughs> the, the carriage is a bit loose. I believe these are eccentrics and they can be turned to tighten that up. But that's quite okay. A little bit of plastic there. Uh, the motors are wrapped in cellophane. Looks like uh, on this back side here, the filament is still entering really close to this lead screw. So that's something we'll have to take a look at. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Well, we got it out of the box. I guess uh, I guess we should put it together. Other than that loose carriage, uh, looks like the lead screws have been greased, which is good. Let's take a look inside this box. I know that the box that came with the standard CR10 didn't hold many secrets. It was just a, a standard box with some standard things. This doesn't look to be any different. Here's a, looks like a, a packing list, an assembly manual, some masking tape. Ooh, this looks to be a filament detector. So I, I'm guessing uh, if I run out of filament, this will tell me, that's handy. Brackets, tools, screws, USB cable, spool holder, US power plug, and a small spool of filament. All right, everything that's in this box is very similar to the standard CR10 box. So I won't go into too much detail there. Right, right on top, this is, the, this is the glass plate. And it is a nice sheet of glass. You can see that it's wrapped in plastic and then it also had a, a foam covering around it. Uh, <laughs> this is a, is a wide strip of masking tape or maybe double stick tape. Two wide strips of masking tape. So on the previous CR10 that I had, uh, I know it included the masking tape, but I went with glue stick and magic goo on the glass build plate and that seemed to work just fine. So more than likely I'll do the same on this. All right, this is, uh, this is the y-axis and uh, there's no wiggle, there's no shimmy, and it slides extremely smooth. I'm really, really happy about that. All right, the bed, let's, let's take a look. <laughs> the, the power wires to the bed are very similar to the CR10 in that they are soldered right here, but there's no uh, strain relief and there's no support on that, so you could suffer similar consequences by not supporting this, just like you did on the original CR-10. As I started unpacking the paperwork, I did find something very interesting, and it's this, uh, it's this, which I cannot read some of, but it does talk about how the couplings, they prevented damage to the couplings by wrapping the motors in plastic, and I know I did show that off, and I think that's 
Uh, that's a call out to some of the problems that people were having with the CR-10s that were having these couplings that were stretched out and broken. So good on Creality to see what's going on and pay attention and, and hopefully change things for the better. Because unboxings and putting machines together are boring. So that's why Sean will speed it up. Look at Sean, look at him go. Look at him speed up that footage. Just in case anybody's wondering, there's two bolts with lock washers that go underneath and into the, the tall pieces of extrusion that hold the gantry. And uh, I have to kind of set it off the table in order to put them in from the underside. One of the things I did find is that the filament detection is done via this switch right here. And I had this extra cable coming from the power supply and I thought, what is this? But then I remembered there was this and it's a pressure fit. And it just looks like it pressure fits right there, giving everything enough room to move, but at the same time, allowing filament to go through and into this path. So we're assembled, let's plug it in and see what happens. The switch is set to 220. Now it's set to 110. Now let's turn it on. Brilliant. What's lucky for us here in the States is that we run at 110 and elsewhere in the world there's 220. And if a power supply is accidentally set to 220 rather than 110 and we plug 110 into it, we're, we're usually okay. But if a power supply is set to 110 and you accidentally put 220 into it, I, I don't know what happens, but that, that doesn't sound good. If you've ever done that, let me know what happens. Well, the power's on and it's reading temperature from the nozzle and it's reading temperature from the bed. So I know the electronics are good. Let's move the Z axis up. Looks to be some hot glue in the track and that's resting over the belt. All right, let's see if we're even. Good enough for now. Now let's tighten up the eccentrics on this. <laughs> it's on the bottom. All right, let's move Z up a little bit more so I can reach. That was easy. I moved the eccentric. It was in the position that was furthest away from the extrusion. I moved it so now it's as close as it can be and we've got easy movement and it doesn't shimmy, which means that we're now at the point where we can load some filament Level the bed, see what we can get. Lo and behold, look, we've got a CR-10 cat. It just finished. In fact, ah, the build plate is still nice and warm. And in typical CR-10 cat fashion, my set of G-code for the cat apparently is the one where the print head just kind of moves off to the side every so often. And that's what creates these little angelic hairs that hang off the side of the cat. But if we take it off of the tape and we look at it, it looks good. It is a good cat. It does look like the area that's supposed to be flat is suffering from some speed artifacts, just from some jiggle. I don't think a belt is loose, but, oh, maybe the belt is loose. I could always tighten that up and give it a go again, or maybe try something different. But I would say that we have a contender for a quality machine on our hands. It looks to be everything that the original CR-10 was, plus a few added extras, such as dual lead screws, and a filament detection system, and a much larger build volume. Beyond that, uh, shoot, let me know what you want me to print with this thing. I'm gonna print some stuff. I've got some projects in mind for this machine, and uh, I can't wait to, to get it going. All right, well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of when cool new stuff is uploaded to the channel. Big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon and YouTube Red and for letting the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more. So I love you guys. As always, kitty cats are cool and high five.